Hello everyone, welcome to a new um, video in the Java Tic-Tac-Toe tutorial series. So in this video, we're going to continue with, we're going to start with networking actually, and we are going to um, also add input, so we're going to get closer to finishing um, our game. So the first thing that I'm going to start off with is going to be input. So for this, um, we're just going to create a new class that is going to handle input, and that class is going to extend mouse adapter here so mouse adapter is basically a class that implements mouse listener and it um, oh it has all those methods that mouse listener has so we can just choose um, which methods we want to override and use so here we're going to need the mouse press method and the mouse press method is a method that is called every single time um, that well you Press the mouse right onto the J panel or the window where we're going to add this listener. So <clears throat> we're just going to add it later. But for now, um, let's do this. So here, in uh, we want to check first if e dot get button and a button is basically which button has been pressed is equals to mouse event dot button one and button one is the left mouse button. <clears throat> so if that's what has been pressed um, on these on this J panel. What we need to do then is we need to actually let's go to our game now. So the thing here is our game is going to become an abstract class instead of just being a regular class. And we're going to have two implementations of this class. One is going to be the server, and the second one is going to be the client. So now let's just create a few abstract methods. Actually, we're just going to make only one now, but later we'll create more. So this one will be input received. Okay, and it's going to take in and x and in y. Um, on where our mouse has pressed. And yeah, then for the see void. <clears throat> okay, so um, now we're going to need to call this method from our game window. And to do that, we're just going to uh, wait a minute, we need the game here. Oh, Alright, all right, we have the game there. So to do this, we're just going to call game dot dot input received, sorry. And we're just going to say e dot get x and E dot get y. <clears throat> but now the problem here is that this will give it the position but in pixels. But we want a position uh, on which field it has clicked on and not in pixels. So to fix this, we're just going to divide it by game dot field width and divide the y by game dot field height. And now, uh, for example, if the mouse is pressed at 100, um, when dividing by the width, it's going to return 0 0.5, and when converted into an integer, which is, well, integer is what we're asking, and in the parameters, it's going to be 0, and we're pressing in the 0 field. And that's basically it. So, now, we've got that input done. Um, it should hopefully work. Oh, and by the way, <clears throat> don't forget to um, do one thing, and that one thing that we need to do is we need to add this mouse adapter to our J panel. So to do this, we need to just call add mouse listener and new input. And that is now done. So now every single time we press on it, it should get that input. Now we're just gonna create our first implementation of our game and I'm just gonna call it <coughs> um, server game. And this is gonna be the server. So extend game. And we're just going to have to implement these methods, uh, actually this one method. So basically, our client and the server are going to have these methods, and they're going to be doing different things, which are then going to be um, the game in the end. So here, I'm just going to create a new server game instead of just game, so that we can test this out. And to test if our input works, <clears throat> we're just going to print out... Um, print out where we've pressed so just so that we can check that it's working so let's run this now and oops i'm running the sorry guys i'm running the um the program that i've been preparing so yeah th that's what it will look like later so when i press here it's zero zero one one two zero you, you can see it's telling us which field we're pressing on <clears throat> we can delete this now so now we're going to have to start off with networking. However, one thing that I want to do before that is I want to go to our window and we are going to add um, a listener 
um, which is basically going to check when the window is about to close, and then we're going to do something for it. So for example, closing the sockets. It's something that we're, we're going to use for networking. We need to close them when the window closes, when the program closes, right? So we need to add a window listener. So let's do this, class, um, I'm just going to call it listener implement <coughs> window listener, and, or actually we can just use the um, window adapter, extends window adapter, excellent. <coughs> so the method is window closing. Let's implement the method. And here, um, once the window is closing, um, wait, we actually just store an instance of a game here. So private game, game, and game, game. <coughs> this dot game is used to game. Okay, done. So now we need, we're gonna add a new method to the game, and it's going to be close. Public abstract void close, and the, the close method is going to be clo uh, called when we close the window. So just don't forget to pass the game. <coughs> I'm sorry for the lag a bit, but okay. So now uh, we just get implemented, and we're going to close the sockets and stuff such as that right here. Um, now just go to our window and call game dot close when the window is closing and before we set the window to visible we're going to add a window listener and that is going to be a new listener like this all right so now let's just go to our server game and system out close <clears throat> now we're just going to run this and when we close it you can see that this method is called and that's perfect so <clears throat> now I'm going to have to start with networking, but before that, I'm just going to make another class, and it's going to be client game, which is just going to be another implementation of game. So, extends game, and there we go. Alright, so let's just see how long the window, the video is. Okay, 7 minutes, that's getting pretty long, though. So, the thing that we've got to do right now is we're going to start with networking. So, our server game... Um, to create a server, we need to use a class called server socket. And the server socket is basically a class that we that we that you use, <clears throat> and using it, you um, basically like host a new server, basically. And then it has the accept method, and the accept method is what you use to wait for a socket to connect. So another thing we're gonna need <clears throat> is a socket. And you're gonna see how we're gonna do this. So first of all, we're just gonna initialize the server socket, and do it like this. So it takes in the port, okay? And the port is basically I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's basically which port it runs on. And make sure not to choose ports um, lower than 1024 because those ports have already been reserved for some things. So um, just use higher than that. <clears throat> I'm gonna go to my game up there and just call you know, um, public static final int port, and I'm just gonna set it to five fives. You can make a ra up a random number or somehow how you want it, but I'm just gonna do it like this. So you know, just use <clears throat> game dot port. Now we need to handle the exception, so surround us with try catch, and there are other things that we need to do. So now we've created a server, and now to actually be able to communicate with a socket that connects, we need to first get that socket. So socket is equal to server socket dot accept. And now what this does is this method stops, and then it waits until something connects on this port on this same IP address. And when that has happened, then uh, this method will um, return the socket that has connected, and we're going to set it to, to this socket. The last thing that we need to do here in the server, in the close, is server socket that close. <clears throat> so when we close our app, we basically close the server socket. Now our client game is going to be look going to be looking a little bit differently. So our client is going to have a private socket socket, and we are going to see how we're going to initialize it. So basically the way that you initialize this is we creating a new socket. We put a um, host in there, that's the IP address. We're going to use localhost here because um, it's basically all the computers in your wireless network. But um, if you're playing over how much or somebody posts for where is their router, you need to just type in their IP address. So you can change this, you can give the player the input in the console before 
<coughs> you start a game or something, but I'm just going to keep it at localhost here uh, for now. So now here we need to specify the port, and that's of course on this port. <coughs> and now, um, as soon as this, okay, let's just use this, okay. So as soon as um, now we connect this port, this method is then going to unblock and we're going to be con able to continue with the program. And that's it. So here, all we need to do is in the end just close this socket and um, surround this with dry catch, of course. Alright, 10 minutes. <clears throat> Never mind, that's good. So, um, we need to, these sockets are, have the input streams, that they have an input stream and an output stream. And an output stream is what you use if you want to write to another, uh, if you want to write, and an input stream is uh, to get the data that has been written from the client or from the server. So now we're just going to make a, a class, I'm going to call it connection, and that class is basically just going to be responsible for writing and receiving data. So first of all, we're going to create a private <coughs> object output stream, output stream, and a private object input stream um, input stream now let's create a constructor and what a constructor is going to do is it's going to take in a socket so take in a socket and it's just basically going to <coughs> get the input and the output stream of the socket and um, set these variables to that so output stream is equals to new um, object output stream and what it takes in is socket, uh, is the output stream of a socket. <clears throat> we also need to handle this exception. Now we do the same for the input stream. So input stream is equals to new object input stream socket dot get input stream. <clears throat> and now we use these two in order to write. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm just going to make a method for a public void send um, packet, I'm going to call it. And here is just going to take the object that we want to send. <coughs> and to send an object, um, we need to call output stream dot write object and just pass in the object that you want to write. <coughs> also, of course, again, start it with try catch. I know it's annoying, but yeah, whatever. And now we just uh, one last thing that we need to do is as opposed to stream the flush and that just makes sure that it just flushes all the bytes to make sure that nothing is lost <laughs> and that's basically how we send packets now we need to create a method for receiving packets but uh, the way we're going to receive packet that pa be receiving packets is by basically making a new thread which is going to be in the run method so we're going to make this um, implement runnable <clears throat> and now we're just going to implement the run method so <clears throat> Alright, and here we're going to be waiting for a packet. So the thing here is going to be, we're going to bring in a close method, so public void close. And the close method is just going to close the input stream, um, input stream not close. Um, let's just do that first so that we just don't forget to do it, that's why I just jumped to it. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm just going to add the throws declaration, so we're just going to handle that somewhere else, <clears throat> where we call it from. Now, here um, in our run, we are... Before that, private boolean running, and what this is going to do is it's just going to be what our loop is going to check for. So if it's running, <coughs> then our loop is going to be running while this uh, variable is true. So I'm just going to set running to true here. And now this loop is going to be running all the time until we set running to false here. And once running is false, <clears throat> the next time it goes, it's just going to finish this thread off. And that's exactly what we want. So here, <clears throat> while waiting for data, um, what we need to do is we need to first get an object that we have received. And for this, we need to use the input stream <clears throat> dot read object. And here, <laughs> again, try catches and all that boring stuff. Um, but yeah, now we have received the object that has been written. Last thing that we're going to do in this episode is we're going to go to our game and make a new method public abstract void <coughs> packet received. And here is just going to take in the object that we have received, and we're also going to have to implement them all here. 
And the last thing in the connection that we want to do is we need to get an instance of the game. Um, game, game. <clears throat> Alright. And you set him. And um, now that we have an instance of a game, we can just uh, go and call that method. So, packet received and pass in the packet that <clears throat> has been received. Now go and implement the methods. And that's it. So, that's it basically. Um, and well, by the way, one last thing <clears throat> is in our connection, we need to create a new thread and start it. New thread this dot start and now we're just gonna have to create a new connection in our games here but that is something that we are going to do in the next episode so or actually no, we're just gonna do it here <clears throat> we're just gonna create that connection here and then later um, we're just gonna use it to so create a connection um, create a connection in our clan game <clears throat> initialize the connections so right here Connection, new connection, um, this is game, and we have the socket there. Initialize this connection, connection is equals to a new connection, S in the game, and the socket. <coughs> Don't forget to close the connections, so in our close method here, we are closing the socket, but before we close the socket, we want to close those connections first. So go to connection.close and um, the same thing right here. Connection.close. <clears throat> and that's it for now. Um, well, of course, now we can't do yet anything <laughs> because we are not running both the server and the client, but that is it for this video. So thank you so much for watching, and in the next video we're going to finally start writing the game. Um, we're going to basically, all that we need to do is just write these two methods for the server, and these two methods for the client, and then our game is finished. So that's it, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.